Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our 10 a.m. education program. My name is Rachel, education specialist at the Topeka Zoo, and today we will be talking about third grade curriculum relating to traits in animals. Now, so far for third grade, we have talked about life cycles and animal social interactions. And today, we have a really fun class for you that I am super excited to teach about because it's a pretty unique and fun topic in the plant and animal kingdom. So like I said, today we'll be, we will be focusing on this word, traits. Now, what a trait is, is it is physical or behavioral characteristics of an organism. So the way they look and the way they behave. And today, when we are talking about traits, we're going to be talking about them through two lenses. The first are traits that are inherited, which means these traits are passed down from the parents to their offspring. And the second lens is traits that are acquired, which means these are traits that are influenced by the environment. So let's look at a few examples just to kind of narrow down what I'm talking about. So again, traits are simply things the way that plants and animals look or behave, right? And the ones that are inherited, that are passed down from your parents and your grandparents and your great grandparents are things that we oftentimes cannot change. Things in the animal and plant world like fur color or eye color, the bone and muscle structure that we have, your size and your height, and the shape of your features. So as an example, as a human, I was born and I have brown eyes. I have brown hair. I have a medium sized nose and I am five foot six. So these are things that I cannot change with the exception of going to the hairdresser and dyeing my hair, which is not something that plants and animals can do. But my height, I'm 5'6". I can put on tall shoes if I want, but I'm never gonna be six foot six. So these traits about me are ones that I inherited from my parents. Both of my parents were medium sized people, so I am a medium sized person. Now, the other thing, that we, the other lens that we are looking at is acquired traits. And these are ones that are influenced by the environment. Things like your knowledge, what you've learned, your skills, how good you are at certain things, the ideas that you have, any scars that you have on your body, and your body condition. What that one refers to is if you eat a lot, right and you become overweight that is affected by your environment or if you don't exercise very much and you become overweight that is affected by your environment so things like learning to ride a bike or going to school and learning to do differing skills like playing basketball or playing baseball all of these you learned from the environment around you. Your parents taught you, a coach taught you, you saw it on TV. So you were influenced by your surroundings. So today we are going to talk all about traits that are both inherited as well as learned from the environment. So let's practice on a human example real quick and then we will uh, talk about this in regards to plants and animals. So just kind of practicing our um, traits here. You can see this is a little girl riding a bicycle. So looking at this picture, some of the inherited traits of the little girl that she was passed on from her parents are the fact that she has blue eyes. She has brown hair. She is medium height for a little girl and she has a cute small nose. So she cannot change these things about her, right? These are traits that were inherited from her parents. However, there are certain traits in this photo that were acquired from the environment that she learned how to do. For instance, she's riding a bike, but there are several steps here that she has learned. She's learned to use her hands to grab onto the handlebars. She has learned to move her feet, to pedal the bicycle, to balance on the bicycle so it doesn't fall over. She's also learned skills like talking. You can see her mom is in the background and surely she's probably communicating with her. Hey mom, look at me, or oh mom, come save me, right? So she is communicating. So all of these actions from grabbing to pedaling, learning how to balance to talking, these were 
acquired from the environment. She learned them as she grew older, but she wasn't born with those characteristics. So let's practice traits in terms of plants and animals, because really I wanna focus most on the animal and plant kingdom for this. So an animal example, here is a picture of a tiger. And in this example, it says a tiger has yellow eyes. So let's practice at home. The tiger having yellow eyes. Do you think this is an inherited trait or an acquired trait? Did the eye color get passed down from its parents or did it get changed by its environment? If you said inherited, you are right. Eye color is something that animals get from their parents. So the tiger's mom or dad likely also had yellow eyes. Now let's look at another example. This tiger is hunting its prey. Is this an inherited trait or an acquired trait? Remember, this is a skill. The tiger has to be skilled at hunting and stalking its food. So as a skill, it's an acquired trait. This tiger learned how to hunt and kill. So we are going to put that over there. Okay, let's look at another example. A bird, the toucan in this photo, is flying. So is flying, which is a skill, is that an acquired trait that is influenced by their environment, by what they learn, or is this something that is inherited and passed down from their parents and grandparents? If you said acquired, you are correct. This trait was influenced by the environment. This bird had to learn how to fly. It didn't hatch out of its egg and automatically fly. It took several months for it to be able to gain the knowledge and skills necessary to do so. So this one is acquired. Okay, what about this? A bird has a beak. This here is the beautiful toucan, and it has a beak. Is this beak inherited? or is it acquired? Just like the tiger's eye color, this is inherited. This beak and the color and shape and size were passed down from this toucan's parents. It could not change it. This is an inherited trait that came from mom and dad. So likely the beak of the bird's parents looked similar in size and color as well. All right, let's look at a plant example. This plant is tall with pink leaves. So this trait of being tall and having this color of leaves pink, is this acquired or is this inherited? If you said inherited, you are correct. Remember the color of fur or eyes or petals, this has to do with inherited. So does size, right? This plant can't help how tall or short it grows. So that is a plant with no water wilts so this plant this is an acquired trait the plant wilted as a response to its environment it didn't get the water that it needed similarly if the plant didn't get the sunlight that it needed it would also wilt so it relies on the environment to survive because it does need water it does need sunlight so by wilting this is an acquired trait. The environment around it has changed this plant. All right, let's look at one more example just to make sure you all have it at home. Oh, here's a fun one. Here's a big old dog. This chunky dog has had too much food and little exercise. So this dog is overweight. Do you think too much food and little exercise, is that an inherited trait? Or is that an acquired trait that is influenced by its environment? If you said this cute chunky potato dog is an acquired trait, you are correct. By eating too much and not exercising, those are body conditions. Those are things that are influenced by its environment. It simply ate too much and it didn't move enough. Now one final example. A dog's fur is yellow. This is a beautiful yellow lab. This yellow lab cannot change the color of its fur. The color of its fur likely came from its parents who probably also had yellow fur. So again, this is an inherited 
traits. Now, animals, they function differently based on their traits. So for instance, this lab who is overweight probably isn't going to run as fast as the lab who is in shape. The oftentimes traits, both inherited and acquired from the environment, help animals to survive. For instance, camouflage would help an animal to blend in with its environment. Many prey animals, like deer, have super long legs because having those long legs allows them to run really fast to escape their predators. So the color of their fur and the length of their legs is an inherited trait. But maybe that deer has learned from its mom the best way to run away from a predator or where, to, where is a safe location to go and where is one that you need to be cautious of. So animals oftentimes survive by using both their inherited and their acquired traits. Now, oftentimes, even within sibling groups, traits can be different. So what I have here is a picture of a litter of kittens. And these kittens had the same mom and dad. But as you can see, even among five individuals of the same species who are brother and sister, they are siblings, there are some similarities and there are some differences in their traits, both the inherited and the acquired ones. Looking at some of the similarities, all five of these kittens have blue eyes. They have cute pink noses and short fur. All three of those things are inherited traits that were passed down from their parents. But you'll notice some of their differences is they have different colors of fur. This one is almost all orange, whereas this one is mostly white. That means that their parents were probably some orange, some white, and maybe even some black in the color of their fur. So even amongst siblings, they can have differences in their inherited traits. Think about if you have a sibling, maybe you guys are a different height or you have a different color eyes or hair. Even if you have the same parents, some of your traits can be different. Same with the acquired traits as well. If we look at our kittens here, we will notice that this kitten looks a little bit bigger than this one over here. Maybe this kitten learned how to walk faster, or maybe it got more milk than this one. So the abilities of the two can be different as well, and that is affected by the environment. So what I wanna do next is I wanna talk about how differences in traits allows individuals of a species to survive. And this is what we call natural selection. And I wanna show you guys a really fun example of so in this picture here, you'll notice that I have three giraffes. These are all the same type of giraffe, but they are slightly different in their inherited traits. This one has a super long neck that is allowing it to reach the leaves. The middle one has a medium height neck, and the last one has a small neck. Now these are all inherited, so they cannot change the length of their neck. However, we can see that this first giraffe is going to be eating all of the food, whereas the second two are unable to reach it. So natural selection is what the definition is differences in traits between individuals of the same species that allow them advantages. In this instance, the tallest giraffe with the longest neck gets all of the food. By getting all of the food, that means that that giraffe will likely survive a lot better than these two who can't reach the tall branches. And by having that long neck and by getting all the food and surviving, that means this one has a better chance of finding a mate. And if they find a mate, a boyfriend or a girlfriend, they have a better chance of reproducing and having babies. So all natural selection means is that the traits of an animal, both inherited by their parents, but also acquired through the environment, these traits um, allow them to have the best chance to survive, find a mate, and reproduce. Now, interestingly, sometimes us humans also affect the environment around us, and we can sometimes affect the traits that are passed down from parent to parent. Now, the first example that I have is of a rattlesnake. Now, one of the inherited traits of this rattlesnake is that it has fangs. 
So we automatically know by having fangs, that is a trait that was passed down from its parents. But the traits of this rattlesnake have changed over time. Interestingly, this is the Catalina Island rattlesnake, and it is named after an island in California where it is found, Santa Catalina. Well, rattlesnakes get their names from this beautiful rattle that they have on their tail. But the Catalina rattlesnake is a rattlesnake without a rattle. Now, the reason it's lost as rattle, this one is actually not due to humans. It's due to the lack of large mammals that have hooves that step on them. In this island, where this is the only place in the world where this rattlesnake lives, um, there's no more large mammals that can step on them, which is why they need the rattle to warn the mammal, hey, I'm right here, don't you step on me or I will bite you. But because there's no predators to step on them, over time, they lost their rattle, which means over time, the environment around them actually changed the traits that are passed down from their parents, which is pretty crazy. And this happens over a long period of time. It's not within a few generations, but this is an example of an animal whose environment affected it so much so that it actually didn't need its rattle anymore. But we do still know it's a rattlesnake based on the color of it, the size, and the fangs. Now, one final example before we meet our animal that I want to talk about is an, anim is an animal whose traits actually are affected by humans. So this is the picture of an African elephant. African elephants, all elephants have a trunk that is an inherited trait from their parents. And male and female African elephants usually all have tusks, which is again, an inherited trait. However, humans are not doing some very nice thing to elephants. Humans are actually poaching elephants, which means they're killing them for their beautiful ivory tusks. And they turn those tusks into statues like this, and they put them up in their house to be a decoration, which is not very nice because that kills the elephants for human souvenirs, which we simply don't need to do. So interestingly, over time, Elephants found that the ones with the biggest tusks were the ones that got poached the most often. So over time, it started benefiting the elephants to have smaller tusks and eventually no tusks, which is sad because these elephants usually use their tusks as a way to fight each other and to defend a predator. But now, some groups of elephants in Africa are actually being born without tusks because humans are poaching them so much so that they have a better chance of surviving without any tusks because the tusks are what the poachers, the bad guys want when they kill the elephant. So this is an example of an animal whose environment affected it so much that over time, their inherited traits, right? Being born with a tusk actually changed and that's pretty sad. So we as humans really need to think about the effects we are having on animals because these elephants truly need their tusks as a way to survive. So friends, I want to meet an animal today who is one that was affected by her environment here in Kansas. But um, thankfully she has been rescued because of it because the environment around her, um, she would not have been able to survive with her new trait. So this here, her name is Koyake, and she is a three-toed box turtle. Now this is a species that we have here in Kansas. She is native to our prairies and our woodlands. Now some inherited traits of turtles is that they have a shell. And this shell, the color of it, is supposed to be this beautiful sandy earth color so she camouflages in with the ground. But you guys will notice she's got a big crack, a big white spot on the back of her shell. That is because she was negatively affected by the environment because she was run over by a car, unfortunately. She used to be a wild turtle and she got hit by a car and it ripped off this top part of her shell, 
which is made of keratin. This is the fingernail layer. And now we can directly see the bony part of her shell. Well, thankfully, somebody rescued her and brought her into the zoo's rehab unit, and we were able to successfully save her, and now this doesn't hurt her anymore, but we cannot release her into the wild because this is a big bull's eye for predators. They would be able to see this, and they would know, mm, there's a scrumptious turtle snack for me to eat. And so by having that change in her environment, by the car literally running her over, she cannot survive in the wild any longer. So now she has a nice, happy, healthy home at the zoo. So humans, we can affect the environment both in good ways and in bad. So please, anytime you're out in nature and you see an animal, we don't want to harm it because although it has inherited traits that allow it to survive and it has acquired traits like its knowledge and skills that allows it to survive as well, humans were part of the environment and we can sometimes do these guys damage. So if you are in third grade, I have a worksheet for you and then we will take some questions. So this worksheet, video and you can find it on the Topeka Zoo website as well and this just goes over some of the things that we learned today it's a front and a back worksheet asking you guys to practice inherited versus acquired traits and as always once you do this worksheet please take a picture and put it in the comments okay I will take questions about traits I know I just threw a lot at you but this is some really interesting stuff is that the state animal, box turtle? Oh, great question. No. So the state reptile is the ornate box turtle, which, is she in here? I think she's buried. No, she's buried somewhere. So we have, um, oh, here she is. So here's the ornate box turtle. So this is the state reptile. Um, you can tell the difference because they've got the yellow um, kind of like decorations, like the patterns on their back. Ornate means decorative or pretty, which is where she got her name, but this is meant to look like prairie grass. So both live in Kansas. You would find them in the same place in the wild, and actually they live in the same tortoise exhibit here at the zoo, um, but this is the state reptile, the ornate fox turtle. Becky asks, isn't it possible for none of the inherited traits seen in the offspring? to not be visible in either parent? Yes, excellent question. So that is what we call recessive traits, right? And they're ones that maybe the parents don't have that you can't see, but they still carry the gene for it. An example of that could be like red hair. Um, that is oftentimes a recessive gene. So maybe the parents don't both have red hair, but a grandparent or a great grandparent does. Excellent question, Becky. But remember, inherited traits come from your ancestors, it's not gonna be like your friends or anybody in your environment. Inherited traits have to come from people you are related to. Gianna asked, how many years have you had that injured turtle? Ooh, so she actually came from a nature center that my boss, Dennis, ran, and he was there for like eight years. So, I mean, she's at least 20, um, and she has been in human care for 10, 15 years. And they can live about 40 or 50 years in the wild. So she's kind of a middle-aged girl. Casey asked, how often is an albino born? Um, those are pretty rare. Um, it just kind of depends, again, on the genes. There was recently an albino giraffe that was born in Africa, and it was one of the first sightings they've ever had. So it is something that can occur, but it's very rare compared to just normal births on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Alrighty, well, if we don't have any more questions, thank you guys so much for learning with me today. I really think this stuff is a super interesting lesson that we don't talk about all of the time. And so I was really excited to put this one together for you. And if you have any questions after this video, feel free to put them in the comments. Um, and again, take a picture of the worksheet. And we uh, hope to see you guys tomorrow. We are talking about structures and reptiles, and we're meeting one of my favorite reptiles. He's super smart and super cute. So see you guys tomorrow at 10.